Good morning. We greet you in the name of our risen Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. We welcome you to the service at Mount Island Missionary Baptist Church, where Reverend Benny Henry is our pastor. We will open up today with a scripture and a prayer, uh, followed by song service. <laughs> Good morning. This morning our scripture read will be coming from Psalms number one. And we'll begin at first number one. And it reads, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law do he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The godly are not, ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. I read to you from the number one Psalm, verses one through six. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his word. Amen. Let us offer prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, Father, we come before your throne thanking you for your grace and soliciting you for your mercy. Father, we ask right now that you clean us up from all our righteousness and set us on a firm foundation. Father, that we may, we may be able to praise you in spirit and in truth. Father, we ask you bless every church door that stands open in your name this morning. Father, we ask you bless the pastor of this church, crown his head with wisdom and knowledge, and give him a better understanding of your word. Father, now we ask that you bless the man that's going to break the bread of life. Dip him down in your treasure spots to do down here on this side. And there's no more us but to do but go in our room and die. Father, we ask that you receive us into yourself, where we can praise you forever and ever. This is our prayer. We ask your darling son, Jesus Christ's name, we do pray. Amen. Amen.
morning. Good morning. Good morning. I greet you in the name of our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes. My name is James Henry. I'm an associate here at Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church with Benny W. Henry as our pastor. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. To all the ministers and their wives, bless you. To all the deacons and their wives, God bless you. To all the officers, to all the members of this church, God bless you. To all the members of the worldwide church, mm -hmm. God bless you. Yes. As we are facing these trying times in the world today, it's important that we realize that God is still in control. Amen. No matter what happens, no matter what situation may be, just know that it still had to go across God's mercy seat in order for it to get to us. So that we know that God is always in control no matter what is going on. But while I have your attention this morning, I'd like to ask that you turn to John, the ninth chapter. John, the ninth chapter. And we'll be looking at verses 18 through 21. John 9, 18 through 21. And I'm reading from the King James Version. There you will find these words. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then doth he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But by what means he now seeth, we know not. Or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age, ask him, he shall speak for himself. Mm -hmm. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his holy word. Let us pray. Amen. Father God, as once again we come before your throne of grace, yes. we bow down heads and humble hearts. Just thanking you for another day's journey. God, as we are here now in your presence, God, we ask that you let us relinquish the concerns and cares of this old world. God, that we can focus and hear from you. Wherever we are, God, or whatever it is we may be doing or experiencing, God, we submit to your Holy Spirit right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, asking that you clear our hearts, that you clear our minds, that you touch our bodies. God, that you allow us to stand firm on your word. Yes that Jesus is the Son of God. God, that we ask that you just continue to move on our behalf. God, whatever it is, whatever situation, God, we just leave it and give it to you right now. God, knowing that you can do all things with faith. God, I ask that you just hide me behind the cross. God, let the people not hear me, but let them hear you. Let them not see me, God, but let them see you. So if there's any that do not know you for the remission and pardon of their sins, they will cry out, Lord, what must I do to be saved? And God, we'll be careful to give you all of the glory and all of the honor. In Jesus' mighty name, let every heart say amen, 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 amen. amen. and amen. amen. I would like to speak to you from the subject this morning of speak for yourself. All right. Speak for yourself. We have often been in a situation or heard the statement or when a time a statement was said about somebody that needed some kind of clarification. Mm -hmm. There may have been a time when you might have even said something or tried to step in and tell somebody what you thought about it was, about what it was that they were saying. All right. Or they are trying to justify or clarify something according to the words that have been stated. Mm -hmm. We've all seen people make public statements or, or have public comments or they'll have sound bites as they call them on the news. Mm -hmm. And before they can finish talking, there's somebody else on the news on another channel trying to tell you exactly what it is they really meant. When you done heard what they had to say for themselves. You see, they, they'll tell you that, well, I know what he or, she, he or she said, but this is what they was really trying to say. Well, I'm here to tell you, church, that if somebody said something, believe what they said because it came out of their mouth. The Bible teaches us in Proverbs 29, 11, a fool uttereth all his mind, yes, sir. but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. Yes, sir. So that means that's going to become a, a time where you're going to have to process 
what comes into your head before it comes out of your mouth. That means somebody can't speak for me or I can't speak for nobody else. But when that time comes for me to utter the words to let good communication come out of my mouth, that means I'm going to have to say it with clarity so that there's no reason for somebody to come on to clean up what it is I done messed up. Because not all of us get it right all the time. That's right. See, we have to pray that God keeps our tongue and keeps our tongue and that don't allow us to get in situations by this little member of our body. Because the tongue can get us in a whole lot of situations that the body can't get us out of. Well, if I have to put a, a, a worldly phrase on it, I, I tongue or write a check that the rest of us can't catch. Right. Speak for yourself. You see, when you are operating under the unction of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. You have somebody that's interceding on your behalf and that's guiding your words so you don't have to worry about saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, you don't need somebody to come and take on the role of an interpreter for you or somebody to be a mouthpiece for you because God has already given you what you needed to say. All right. Church, there's no need for somebody to come in and to fix your words up or doctor on your comments because if you said it, you meant it, and you have to give, give an account for it. Because the Bible teaches us that we're going to have to give an account for every idle word that we say. Idle words are words that don't benefit anybody. They don't prosper you. They don't prosper the person that you're talking to, and they definitely don't prosper the king. But we have to make sure that we are watching what we say. And in that, we have to be able to speak for ourselves and speak in a way where it allows truth to be heard. All right. I've been told or I've heard also time that if somebody tells you who they are, believe them. Uh -huh. Because they know them way better than you do. Yes, they woke up with them this morning. Mm -hmm. they, went, they went to sleep with them last night. And they're going to be with themselves all day today. So if they tell you something about them, believe them before you try to uh, fix them up and doctor on them yourself. Amen? Amen. But don't let nobody tell you something that that's not true. We see, when you are speaking for yourself, when you are allowing God to use you, allow to use your voice to, to, to edify the church, not edify yourself, but edify your church, and, and when, in doing so, God will keep you out of certain circumstances. Amen? Amen. Proverbs 21, 23 says, Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. Mm -hmm. That means if you can just shut up for just a little while, <laughs> you, you ain't got to be quiet all day. But if, but if you can just hold your tongue, hold your peace just a little while longer, you might keep yourself out of a bad situation. You see, I've I, I heard some people say, well, I, uh, or they make the mistake of trying to speak for God. When they, when they, when they, when they see somebody, they, they, they say they, they got so much God in them that there ain't enough left for you. Well, God told me to tell you. Well, and, and they won't try to start prophesying a proper line over you before you even get a chance to get out your car good to come to the church. Well, I'm here to tell you folks that God ain't going to tell you nothing about me unless he tell me first. You just going to be the confirmation to come along to verify what God done already told me. So when you trying to tell me something, I'm going to need you to apply that word to yourself and speak for yourself before you try to speak for me. You see, this is where we're going to have to really dive deep into the word and understand that once we start speaking for ourselves, we develop a testimony. Mm -hmm. okay. And in, in that testimony, can't nobody tell your testimony like you. Mm -hmm. Because they hadn't lived it, they hadn't breathed it, they hadn't experienced it. They don't know all the ins and outs or all the sleepless nights that you've had, all the days that you done sat up and cried, or all the things that you done had to go through to be where God has you at right now. Mm -hmm. So when somebody try to start telling you about you, say, no, I don't need you to speak for me. I'm of age, so I'm going to speak for myself. Yeah. You, 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 you see, once you are able to realize that it is God that is orchestrating our words and it is him that is allowing us to live, move, and breathe and operate on his behalf, we'll be able to act just like David in Psalm 119 when he said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Now, he didn't say I wasn't going to sin against thee. He said that I might not sin against thee. That means that some, even in that prayer, David realized that he's still going to come up short. But in this, David was speaking for himself. How do we know David was speaking for himself? There's a lot of I statements in that. 
in that, in that particular verse of scripture. How uh, not word have I hid in my heart? Those are uh, uh, statements of claim where David is speaking about and says that, that I might not sin, and then he referred back to God against thee. So I'm not, I'm not going to speak or I'm not going to allow myself to put myself in a situation where it's causing me to be separated from you, God. I don't know this, if you notice this, but if you go back and look at our, our, our past two messages, God has been speaking to us this entire month. Yeah. And, and if you hadn't uh, had a chance to look at the services that have been from uh, Pastor uh, Henry and Reverend Porter, I'm going to go ahead and give you a quick refresher about it. Well, uh, uh, Pastor on first Sunday preached about hands that speak. Yeah. And if you don't, if you don't have the text down, it's John 20, 19 through 22. And in that, he taught us about Jesus' work and the work that he did from his hands by a motivated heart. Reverend Porter followed that up the following week with a prayer for good conduct, and it came out of Psalm 19, verse 14. And that David, when he prayed a prayer for good conduct, he, he knew that it was orchestrated by his heart and it would allow him to speak certain things that would be pleasing to God. And these were a culmination and they were exemplified in this one particular text. Well, God has us today looking at John. And in this, he's telling us in, verse, uh, in chapter 9, verses 18 through 21, speak for yourself. You see, because once we're able to speak for ourselves, not even our parents can say something on our behalf. Not even our brothers and sisters, not even the preacher can say something on your behalf. Because on that day of judgment, when you have to stand in front of God for yourself, can't nobody else speak for you but you. And Jesus is going to tell you to speak for yourself. You see, as we are looking back on these messages and, and how God has tied them all together for us to, to, to learn from today, the hands of Jesus spoke first. You see, John 9 and 6, if you look at the uh, previous scriptures in, 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 in uh, previous verses of scripture in this text, in this chapter, the Bible says, when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and he made clay of the spittle and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. Here you have in this particular text, in verse 6, Jesus was speaking with his hands. And, and if you haven't studied or if you're not a theologian or a Bible scholar or, or like myself, somebody that's unlearned and we're trying to figure it out and read and learn for it together, this wasn't the only time that Jesus had to spit and lay his hands on somebody to rectify their situation. Amen. Mark 7, 33 to 35 says, And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ears, and he spit and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said unto him, If I thought, being, that is, be open. And straightway his ears were open, and the string of his tongue was loose, and he spake plain. You see, when Jesus lay his hands on you, yeah. when Jesus make a medical salve out of his spit, yes, it's going to clear up some things that you got going on in your life. Yeah. And when he touches you, it's going to loose some strings that's been placed on your tongue, and you'll be able to speak plain because you're speaking about the goodness of Jesus Christ. Right. Jesus spoke again with his hands in Mark, the 8th chapter, verse 23. He said that he took the blind man by the hand. Here it is, his hands are speaking again, and led him out of town. And, it, and I really want you to look at this right here. When, when Jesus dealt with these two individuals, he didn't deal with them in front of a whole bunch of people. You know how some people live, they act like they can't, they can't get saved unless they're in front of a whole bunch of folks? Or, or, or they act like they can't preach unless it's a church full of folks? Well, here it is, Jesus then had to pull these people off to the side so he can get them along, get them away from all of the distractions that can go on in life. And he, the Bible says he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of town. How many people are letting Jesus take you by the hand and lead you into a place where he can speak to you today? He said that when he had spit on his eyes, he put his hands upon him and he asked him if he saw off. God is trying to lead us out of some situations and he is taking each and every last one of us by the hand and he's saying, I'm going to spit on you and I'm going to give you an anointing that's better than any kind of olive oil you can buy at the Christian bookstore. It's going to be able to heal all manner of healing. All you got to do is trust and believe that when I touch you and lay my hands on you, you'll be able to speak for yourself. You see, God has been laying his hands on us since the garden. How do you think he formed man? Amen. Amen. 
You see, God spoke everything else into existence. He said, let there be light, and there was light. He, he hung one light for the daytime and one for the nighttime. He hung the stars in. He spoke all the living creatures on the face of the earth. He spoke the trees and the plants. He spoke everything else into existence. But when it came time to make man, what you say? he let a cool mist come from the ground. The Bible says he shaped him with his hands and made him after his own image and likeness. Church, what I'm trying to tell you is God been speaking to us with his hands from the beginning. If you just allow him to take you and lead you, he will allow you to speak for yourself. And it don't matter what the world tries to say, say to you to tell you to be quiet. You'll be able to speak with a boldness that can't nobody shut the silence. All right. All right. Speak for yourself. Speak for yourself. Yeah. But what happens when God put his hands on us? We act just like Moses. Mm -hmm. well, well, God, I, 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 can't, I can't go over and tell Pharaoh this because, oh, Lord, I'm not eloquent in speech. And, you know, you done spoke to me, your servant, but I'm slow of speech and slow of tongue. And God said, then, who made man's mouth? And who made it the dumb or the deaf or the seeing or the blind? Not I, the Lord? So God is saying to you, don't worry about what your circumstances are. I'm the one that made you. Not only did I make your mouth, but I can make the words for your mouth. And you can speak the words plain that I'm going to give to you. But just in case that ain't good enough for you, don't you got somebody named Aaron coming his way and he's going to be glad to see you. Let him go and speak with you and on your behalf and I'll teach you what it is you need to say. A lot of times we want to get ahead of God and we don't want to let God teach us what to say. We just say the first thing to come out of our mouth. Amen. Whatever come up, come out. And whatever that is, we just pray it don't hurt nobody's feelings. Uh -huh. right. Realize that when you start talking loose or, or as they say, talking out of both sides of your face, uh -huh. it's easy. That, that's when things start to get uh, twisted up and that's when you cause yourself more hardship and more headaches than that's necessary. Yeah. God is telling you to speak for yourself. Allow him to touch you. Allow him to shape you and mold you. Allow him to give you what it is you need so you'll be able to speak and have a good report when it comes about the goodness of Jesus. The week after that, Reverend Porter came to us and he talked about the conduct, a prayer for good conduct. Knowing that the good conduct of the man that was blind spoke next in our text. After Jesus had touched him and gave him instructions and directions. He said unto him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. So he sent him to sent. Yeah. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> Jesus sent him to sent. Yeah. <laughs> How many times has God sent you to a place where you should already be? See, God sees a lot of times we want to we want it to line up to according to our calendar and align up to what we want it to be. And God, I gotta have this right before I do this, or God, I gotta have this right before I get to this next phase or next step in life. God is telling you to go. I've already made provisions for you. All you gotta do is trust and believe that I am who I say that I am. Go to the pool. He went his way therefore and washed and came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that was blind said, Is this not he that sat in bed? Mm -hmm. Some said, This is he. Others said, No, nah, that ain't him. He, he is like him. But he said, I am he. Yeah. You see, because God had moved in his circumstances, because he had been praying and, 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 and sitting on the side of the road begging for things and, and asking for things, God came by and gave him what he needed. Yeah, right. Therefore, they said unto him, How? Were thine eyes open? Mm -hmm. He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received sight. Mm -hmm. They said unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. <clears throat> when Jesus does something for you, Jesus is not going to stick around and wait for you to throw a party to try to announce it to everybody. <laughs> If you live the life that God done called you to live by the works that he's done for you on Calvary, no matter where you are, Jesus is also. So when you're speaking and you're telling people about the goodness of Jesus Christ, they'll be able to see what he's done for you. And they'll be able to sit and say, well, wasn't that brother James that grew up and didn't have nothing? 
Had to beg and borrow, had to share clothes with his brother, didn't have nothing. I can go in my closet and pick out anything I want to now. I got clothes that I done had so long, I done forgot that I had. <laughs> I'm not saying that to be brag or to me. I'm just saying that if you trust God, if you believe that God can and will, he, he just ask and he's going to give it to you. Matter of fact, he already got it set aside for you. He just waiting for you to get into a position and a place where you can receive it. And once you get to that place where you can receive it, then you're able to speak for yourself. You see, the man had to go to the pool and follow the instructions of Jesus in order to receive something that he never had. I've been told this, and I'm going to share this with you now. In order to get what you never had, you're going to have to do something you ain't never done. Right. You, see, you, you see, God, I want my sight. Well, you're going to have to go wash. God, I need, I, I, I need your help. I need your, 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 your healing power to manifest. Well, you're going to have to fast and pray. God, I need more knowledge. I need more understanding. Well, you're going to have to study to show yourself approved. That's right. That's right. Jesus here speaking not only with his hands in this situation, but he was speaking with his heart. Because when he looked down on this man, he had compassion. When we look at our brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to have compassion. Realize that when God brought you out, he didn't bring you out just so you can go on your way. He brought you out so that when you see your fellow man, your brother or your sister, that is enduring the same hardship that you've been through, you have a place of understanding. Now you can reach back and help them along their journey. You see, I'm trying to encourage somebody this morning that no matter what your circumstances are, that you've been dealing with for however long you've been dealing with, they have been designed and orchestrated by God so you can have an encounter with Jesus Christ so he can bring you out better than you were when you went in. You see, good conduct didn't come with born being blind. The good conduct came when he was obedient. The Bible teaches us that too, that obedience is better than sacrifice. That means, like, God, I'm going to be obedient, not because it, it, it was what I want to do, God, but it's because what you told me to do. Yeah. It may not feel good to me. It may not look good on me. But, God, I'm going to be obedient. Because we do this, we're able to speak for ourselves. But oftentimes, church, oftentimes, for those that are viewing, when you start speaking for yourself, people ain't going to believe you. And our text clearly lays that out for us today. After, see, in, in the text, the Jews didn't believe he was who he said he was. Right. And this is somebody that they walked past every day, stepped over every day, walked around every day, yeah. looked at what they had in their pocket, or held their purse just a little bit tighter, and moved on the other side of the road, didn't even stop to help him. But now that they see him seeing, mm -hmm. now they want to have something to say. The, the, the scripture goes on in verse 23 through 25, it says, Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then again, they, the man, uh, they called the man that was blind and said to him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner, talking about Jesus. And he said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. You, you, you see, when don't nobody else believe what God is doing for you, you can believe what God is doing for you because you are a living witness of the goodness of Jesus Christ. That way you can speak when can't nobody else speak for you. I want to tell you this morning, church, that when, when you speaking for yourself, you don't need nobody else to speak for you. You don't need an interpreter. You don't need a mouthpiece because can't nobody tell your testimony like you. Speak for yourself. While you're running this race, you can't be ashamed of the things that God has done for you. Luke 9 and 26 says, For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, yeah. of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. But we need to be just like Paul. Paul in Romans 1 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, for the Jew first and also to the Greek. Speak for yourself. You see, when you ain't ashamed of your words, you ain't going to mince words because what you're speaking is coming from the heart and it's coming from a place of love. And even though the person that you're speaking to may not want to hear it, it's what they need to hear to help them be better in that situation. 
You're speaking to them from a place where you can tell them about what it is that God has for them. But it ain't for you to make it happen for them. The Bible teaches us that one plant, one water, but it's God to give the increase. Yeah. You may be the person that's planting. You may be the person that's watering. It ain't for you to see the manifestation right now. It's for God to reveal that in the fullness of time. All you have to do is stand on God's word and speak what it is he told you to speak yeah. when he told you to say it. Don't be ashamed or don't be embarrassed or don't try to, 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 to guide your words to the point and make them so eloquent where you don't even know what it is you're saying. You need to be just like the three Hebrew boys when they had to stand before Nebuchadnezzar when they didn't bow down to the graven image and, and they told him, said, oh king, we are not careful for what it is we got to say to you right now. That means I ain't got to give it no thought. I ain't got to worry about what you're going to do to me yeah. because the God that I serve is able to keep me and deliver Deliver me out of thy hand, O king. So go ahead and heat up your furnace seven times hotter than it should be. But I'm here to tell you that when you throw me in, it ain't going to do me no harm because I'm going to walk around loose with the Son of God in the furnace with me. And because I walk loose, I can speak for myself. Right. Then you can be like John and Peter when they told them that, that they need to be quiet over in Acts the fourth chapter, verse 18 through 20. It said they called them and commanded them not to speak or to teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you, or more than God, judge ye for yourself. We cannot but speak the things that we have seen and we have heard. I can't help but tell you about how good God has been to me, because I can't tell you about being hungry unless I've been hungry. I can't tell you about not having no money unless I ain't had no money. I can't tell you about not having no running water or no lights if I ain't never had no running water or lights. I can't tell you about having to beg, borrow, and scrape to try to make ends meet if I ain't never had to beg, borrow, and scrape to make ends meet. But church, I'm here to tell you, I done been there, and I'm able to come out on the other side and tell you, look at back, look at back at how far God has brought me from. I may not be what I ought to be, but thank God I ain't what I used to be. Because God is moving on my behalf, and I'm able to speak like I ought to speak. And the Bible teaches us over in Ephesians that for me, that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly. I ain't going to hide what I got to say. I ain't going to miss words with you. I ain't going to argue back and forth with you because the Bible tells me that a wise man should not contend with a fool. But the world will say if you argue with a fool from a distance, the world can't tell who is who. But I'm here to tell you that I'm going to open my mouth boldly, make known the mystery of the gospel because I'm an ambassador in bond and I'm going to speak boldly like I ought to speak. I ain't worried about what the world got to say about me. The only thing I'm worried about hearing Jesus say is well done, thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on up a little bit high. I'm going to make you rule over many. Don't worry about what's going on down here. Work the works of him that has sent you while it is day. Because when night cometh, no man can work. I may not be physically blind, but at one point I was spiritually blind. I may not be physically disabled, but at one point I was spiritually disabled. I may not be able to be what you want me to be, but thank God I'm able to be what he called me to be. Jesus came down through 42 generations so I can speak for myself. Jesus healed the sick and caused the lame to walk, the dumb to speak and the blind to see so I can speak for myself. Jesus was whipped all night long, marched from judgment hall to judgment hall so I can speak for myself. The Bible tells me that they took him up to a hill called Calvary, hung him in the middle of two thieves, and he stayed there from the sixth to the ninth hour when the face of the earth got dark, so I can speak for myself. But when he cried out with a loud voice, it is finished, and gave up the ghost. That's when he was working on our behalf right there, because that's when he was taking the sting of death away from us. They took him off the cross, laid him in a bar of tombs, stayed there Friday, all day Saturday, but early Sunday morning. He got up out the grave and he had all power, heaven and earth in his hands, so I can speak for myself. Yeah. Stayed around 40 days until he could be seen of me. Stepped on the cloud and went back to heaven and sat down at the right hand of the Father. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that he saved the rest like me. Yeah. I'm glad that he died so I can have a right to the tree of life. Because Jesus, because of Jesus' sacrifice, I'm able to take off corruptible and put on incorruptible. Because of Jesus' sacrifice, I'm able to take off mortality and put on immortality. 
And because of Jesus, I can take off these old clothes that I got, put on my robe, grab my crown, live in my mansion, and walk around heaven all day, sing praises to God all day long, because the Bible says the Sabbath will have no end. I don't know about you, but if you're able and you're ready to speak for yourself, you ought to give God some glory this morning. Because God has been better than you than you've been to yourself. He's made a way for you when there wasn't no way. He's always had his hand on you. He'd never leave you nor forsake you. People may cast you out just like in the text, but don't worry about it if they cast you out. The Bible tells us when Jesus heard that they cast him out, he went and found him. So if the world cast you out, don't worry about it. Jesus is already there to come and find you. As a matter of fact, he said nobody can take you out of his hand because that's the kind of love he has for you and I today. So when we stay with him in everything that we have, we can receive the ability to speak for ourselves. That's all right. And when we speak for ourselves, we can speak boldly. Come before the throne of grace. Yes, we can. Uh, make our requests known unto God. Yes, Lord. And he will answer them. Because of Jesus, hand speak, touching our heart, allowing our heart to speak, we're able to speak for ourselves. Romans 10, 9 through 11. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth yes, Lord. the Lord Jesus, yes. and shalt believe in thy heart, that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Yes, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture said, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Yes, right. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now for this time that you allowed us to come to your throne of grace. Yes, Lord. God allowed us to speak to you. God, not out of anything that we need. God, but out of what it is you would have for us to receive. God, we just say thank you. Thank you. God, we can't thank you enough for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. God, we just ask right now that you just, just have your way in this world, God. God, we know that you have appointed a time such as this when the pandemic is running rampant, the economy is upside down, people are turning from wise counsel. God, people are becoming lovers of themselves. God, you have proclaimed this in your word because you spoke it to us. And God, because you spoke it, we receive it. And we are able to, in turn, speak it to a lost and dying world. God, so that they can see and know you for themselves. Yes, Lord. God, so they can hear you call them by their name on that day. God, we ask that you just have your way right now in the name of Jesus. God, touch everyone that is underneath the sound of my voice in this sanctuary. God, for those that are viewing, God, for anyone that don't know you for the remission and pardon of their sins, God, we ask that you just allow them to open up their hearts so that you can come in and sup with them. God, so that they can be a part of the body of Christ. Whatever it is, wherever it is they may be right now, God, we ask that you have your way. Rich, poor, young, old, black, white, it doesn't matter. God, we just ask right now that you move mightily on the face of this earth. So that, God, we'll be able to speak and proclaim Jesus in a lost and dying world. God, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all of the praise. In Jesus' name, let every heart say amen. 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 And amen. The doors of the all church right. are open. Yes, Lord. If there's anyone that wants to come by letter, candidate for baptism, or Christian experience, we're here to receive you in my knowledge in any way that we can, whether it's you actually come into the house, getting in contact with the church here, get in, con in contact with the deacons or contacting us through Facebook. Or if you're not in this area, you just you need to partner with a church that is preaching and teaching the gospel, the word of God, sound doctrine, uncompromised. We just ask right now that you allow God to move on your behalf so you can speak boldly as you ought to speak for yourself. God bless you. Amen.
got a story to tell now today. And only you can tell. Because you're going to have to speak for yourself when you stand before the judgment. We ask that you consider Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. That you may become saved and be a part of the kingdom of God here on earth. That you may be a part of the kingdom in heaven. As we sing, we'd like you to consider. And if you want to call and want to have a talk with either the deacons or the preacher from this church, just call our church number and we will respond. Yeah. 
giving us these this morning. And we pray that if God blesses us, that we'll come back on Wednesday night in our Bible study. And we ask you to join us at 7 o'clock. We ask you to pray for those that we know are sick, those who have given us names to pray for. Because God has the same power without us having assembled together uh -huh. that he has from our homes. Let us be a praying church. Amen. Have a great day. Yeah.